technologically oh. challenged. Oh. All right, so we'll get started. Uh, today my intention, uh, my intention is to bring in a lizard into a modified sun salutation. Um, so in the 200 hour teacher training program, uh, this weekend they're doing their sun sal practicums. It's a very uh, exciting and scary time for them. And uh, I, I wanted to prepare a, a little segment for them on how to modify the sun salutation, specifically for pregnancy. Um, so the first part uh, will be designed toward that. Um, you know, how, how would we approach a sun salutation if we had a, a large belly uh, or if we were pregnant? So I'm going to take the feet a little wider in forward folds and then in our low lunges take the the front foot out to the side moving towards lizard so that'll be for our warm-up and then I'll, I'll deviate uh, after we're warm uh, and merge it to uh, arm balances and uh, some of the the fun stuff this can work up to so um, that's my intention for today. So let us start standing. We'll get right into it. Take a look at your feet. And we're going to take our, our stance a little wide. It's a little wider than, uh, than hips width apart. And draw the shoulders up towards the ears, roll them back and down. A few times, inhale. Rolling the shoulders up towards the ears, back and down, palm spiral out. Release tailbone towards the earth, and one more time. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. We'll take three breaths in through the nose. And out through the nose. Begin to externally rotate your upper thighs, screwing your heels into the mat, breathing in through the nose, all the way up the spine to the top of the head, and exhale, maybe reach your fingertips down towards the floor. And we'll roll out the wrists. So starting with uh, wrist rolls is great, especially if you are working with uh, the, the pregnant population uh, because the ankles and the wrists and the elbows and the knees tend to be a little achy. And it's good for everybody to do circles on their feet to help ground and, and get into the body. So often uh, we're, we're up in a headspace so we want to get down into our feet. You might even bend and extend the legs, get really heavy. Yeah. And we'll inhale and reach the arms out and up. And then bend the knees on the way down as you fold forward. Right. So remember, we're making room for our belly in between our thighs. Swivel the hips from side to side, shake the head out. And inhale, halfway lift, we'll bring palms to the shins. And exhale, fold in. Let's try that two more times. Inhale, halfway lift. So you can always bring in some blocks for stability. And exhale, fold. Just lift and lower. Inhale, heart forward. And exhale, fold. All right. So uh, hands on the blocks or on the floor. Let's step the left foot back. So you might bring the blocks down to the lowest level uh, if you're working with them. And we're going to come into a lunge. So you lower that left knee and then heel toe the right foot out to the side a little bit. So you're taking your, your knee kind of past your elbow and we'll just bend and extend. So we're getting into our hamstrings. Reach the hips back. You might let your toes come up off the floor and then uh, bend in. Hearts forward. 
and take your right knee back to meet the left. So coming into child's pose. And your hands can stay on the blocks and bring those in a little bit. And get into the side body, take the hands to the right. And then over to the left. And coming through center. And let's very quickly come into downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, then your left sitting into squat. Right. And if you have your block, you can always uh, place that underneath your bottom as well. So sitting back into your squat pose, you can bring your hands to prayer. And then lift your bottom, and we'll come into our wide-legged forward fold again. So feet more than hips width apart, hands on the blocks, three rounds, halfway lift, exhale, fold, so waving up through the spine, extending up through the crown of the head, and exhale, releasing down. One more time. And release, move your blocks off to the side, reverse swan dive out and up, palms touch overhead. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale out and up. Swan dive, hinge from the hips. Bring in your blocks, three rounds, halfway lift. So inhale, all the way up the spine through the crown of the head. And exhale, releasing down. Let gravity take hold of your head. One more time, inhale, lengthen. And we'll step the right foot back, lower the knee, and heel toe the left foot out to the side, moving into a, a low lunge towards lizard. And you can bring your blocks down to the lowest level. So we're going to lower into the hips, keep the heart up, and then uh, extend that left leg. So inhale, heart forward. Exhale, left leg is long, toes up. And just bend and extend a few times. Inhale broad through the collarbones, exhale, getting into your hamstring on that left side. This is great for runners too, because their hamstrings are notoriously tight. Now a lot of these modifications, and they can be used for, for pregnancy, they can be used for athletes, um, you know, for obesity, you know, these are uh, very interchangeable. I remember one time I, I had a pregnant lady come to class and uh, you know, I, I told the entire class, I'm like, we're going to do prenatal yoga today and you're going to thank her afterwards. And everybody was like, wow, that was great. So it's just a, a, a different approach. Yeah, some of the same concepts can be used across the board, though. All right, so we're going to come forward and draw your left knee back to meet the right. Just a breath or two in a wide-legged forward, or excuse me, a wide-legged child's pose. And you've got your blocks underneath your hands, so that might give you a different experience. Take your hands over to the left, so getting into the side body here. You can breathe into your right rib cage. This is the home of your liver. Diaphragmatic breaths, big inhale, take your hands to the right, slow out breath, and we'll come to center. So making your way to downward facing dog, tuck your toes under, lift your hips high, take a breath, and step your left foot forward out to the side, followed by your right. So we're stepping forward into squat. Hands to prayer, and you can bring your uh, your blocks underneath your bottom for support. A few breaths. Okay, now this time I'd like to offer a variation of coming up from your squat. So inhaling up, and then exhale out the side and sit back down in to your squat. Inhaling up, and exhale, sit back down into squat. 
three to five rounds. So inhale and exhale. Inhale and out to the side and exhale. All right, inhale all the way up. There we go. And heel to the feet in. All right, so inhale, reaching up. Let's take half moon to the right, getting into the left side body. And inhale, come to center, over to the left. And tick tock from side to side. Move at your own pace. to one side and then the other. And inhaling up and we'll take hold of opposite elbows. All right, so stepping the left foot back, we'll come into warrior one, bending into your right knee. Again, uh, you have hold of opposite elbows and just let your head relax back. Relax the shoulders. You can bring your hands to prayer and bring your thumbs to the nape of your neck. You can reach back behind you and take hold of opposite elbows or find reverse prayer. And inhale, press the earth away, straighten the right leg. Exhale, bend into your right knee. Move with your breath, inhale. You might even lift your toes on your front foot and exhale, bend into your front knee. So you're gonna spread the mat apart between your feet. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, bend. Two more times. If you're in reverse prayer, draw the elbows back. Good, and release. Reach the arms out and up. Palms touch overhead. And exhale, bring your hands down. We're coming in, uh, and bring in your blocks if you can. Uh, we're coming in to a raised runner's lunge. So you're gonna peel your back heel up and maybe swivel your foot back a little bit further. So you're in a raised lunge, moving towards lizard, bring your hands to the inside of the block and heel toe your right foot out to the side. And you can bring the blocks down to their mid level. Now you can always modify by lowering that back knee. If you want a little bit more, we're gonna come in to uh, lifting the left knee up and pressing out through the heel. Okay, and then bring the blocks down to their lowest level. In Lizard, we want to work the heart forward. So let me show you from the side uh, what I'm trying to avoid. As we tend to round the upper back here and we want the back nice and long. So lizard focus class today. If you feel open enough, you can start to roll onto the pinky toe edge of that right foot. So you can draw it in and out. Hearts forward. All right, and then everybody lower your back knee. So take your right hand to your right knee and twist from mm, the sternum up, twist. So especially if you were working with a pregnant population, you'd want to encourage them to point the navel down towards the ground. But we're trying to focus this twist into the thoracic spine and the shoulders.
Come back to center. Hands on the blocks, tuck your back toes, lift your knee, and heel toe your right foot in. Okay. You're gonna step your left foot forward to meet the right, back into our squat. Sitting low. And you can kind of swivel from side to side here. And that lunge hopefully helped to, to build a little bit of heat for you. And we'll come back to our squats. So open fingertips up for Lotus Mudra. Inhale, coming up. And exhale, sitting down into your squat. Inhale. Uh, exhale. Rising up. And coming down. What goes up must come down. As above, so below. And inhale all the way up to standing. Heels with the feet in. Just a little bit. There you go. And you can circle out the hips here. All right. Now we're coming into our Virabhadrasana 1 on the other side. So your right foot steps back. Bending into your left knee this time. Bring the hands to prayer to start, maybe some circles on that front leg. Anchoring into the outer edge of your back foot. And lean back. Yeah, so the shoulders are over the hips. And reaching overhead, take hold of opposite elbows. Notice which hand uh, you bring on first, and then you, maybe you can switch. All right, so shake hold, leaning back into your arms, relax your shoulders down, and get really heavy in your feet. You might play a little bit with drawing your knee out to the side and, and then letting it collapse in and just see how that changes your stability. You want the knee tracking over second and third toe. So you can inhale and lift uh, the toes, lengthen your left leg, and then exhale, bend into your lunge. And if you look down, you can see the big toe, but not the others. Okay. Inhale, lift and lengthen. You can play with your your hands, bring your thumbs to the nape of your neck, leaning back. You can reach back behind you and take hold of opposite elbows. Continue to move with your breath, bend and extend that front leg. Find reverse prayer if your shoulders are open. Drawing the elbows back. out and up. Palms touch overhead. Virabhadrasana one. Inhale, lift the gaze. And then exhale, fold forward. You're going to plant your hands. Now we're coming into that raised lunge. So you might swivel your right foot back a little bit. If you've got the blocks, please bring them in to frame your front foot. And we're going to heel toe that left foot out to the side a little bit. Bring your blocks to the inside, coming in to lizard pose. So your back heel is pressing uh, straight back behind you. Uh, you really want to lift from your groin because we're getting a nice psoas stretch. And uh, lizard also helps to get into the iliacus and that front leg too. So you might roll onto that pinky toe side of the foot as uh, we start to open up a little bit. And remember we're just warming up. Yeah, 
Yeah, so you might even try hanging right here on that right groin and then back out of it. To hang and then back out. So we want that stability to draw, and what I mean by back out is draw your femur head in to the socket. There's a little dance going on. Hearts forward, so you might try rounding the upper back, maybe even look at your navel, ooh, that's interesting. Uh, and then draw the heart forward, see what changes. Just got a nice crack out of my back ankle, that's good. And then we're all gonna lower that right knee down onto the ground. Right, you might bring your blocks down a level. All right, so again, heart forward, taking this deeper, bring your left hand on top of your knee. And uh, now, even if you're not working you know, with uh, a pregnant belly, try and point your navel towards the ground and keep this twist uh, targeting the thoracic spine. So, navel points towards the ground as you twist from, let's say, the sternum up. And then maybe let the navel come along with it. You know, see how that's different. Get into different parts of the spine, spinal column. And we are going to take this a little deeper uh, moving forward. Yeah, I was surprised that when I was pregnant, um, like low lunges, even low lunges, if the knee was straight on, it felt really awkward. So, um, you know, just taking the knee out to the side and moving more towards a lizard uh, was uh, much, much better. All right, so let's tuck the back toes, lift the knee, and step your right foot forward, coming into our squat again. All right, now here's where I'm gonna start to deviate. You know, we are moving towards uh, arm balances, so you can kind of move from side to side here, make nice. If you want a little more restorative approach, bring some blocks underneath your bottom, hang out. Now you can always twist and open up to the side. But for those of you that want to practice uh, your arm balances in crow, I do highly recommend that you bring in a pillow for your face in case uh, this goes sideways, um, and squats are really a uh, nice setup to come into your crow pose. So you plant the hands, middle fingers are coming straight out of the wrist, and you can reverse engineer this, that's actually how I'm going to start uh, to teach you, is to come in uh, with your knees behind your arms and start with your head on the bolster and teeter-totter back and forth. So you get used to having your feet up in the air and the weight on the backs of your arms. Now as you get a little bit more proficient with this, you want to control how you're falling out. Um, so look up to come out. And then once you're ready, bring your knees as high up into the backs of your armpits as you can. Look forward. You always want to look where you want to go, and maybe one toe at a time, you lift up off the mat. Take three to five breaths. And we're all going to meet back in squat, so take your time. And have fun with it. That's something that uh, it's, it's a lot less push and, and a whole lot less strength than you think. So let's roll out our wrists and I'll show you one more time um, what I would like to uh, bypass is people tend to try and hop forward in to a crow or they'll push with their feet. Lead with your heart. So you know, instead of trying to push off with the feet, tip forward, leading with your heart, and voila, you are there. You know, and even if you hold it for just a second, you know, there's a lot of information in that nanosecond. So, um, you know, we'll just find that, uh, that fulcrum point and that little sensation of weightlessness. All right, hands to prayer. And 
Squat. Inhale up. Reach up out to the sides. Exhale down. Inhale up. Reaching up out to the sides. Exhale down. One more time. I'll normally do like three to five rounds of something because it's just the body likes it. Alright. Good. Now heel to the feet back in. Alright, again we're gonna need our our blocks. And I'll demonstrate. All right, so inhale, reaching up, exhale, folding forward. Bring your hands to the blocks. Left foot back. All right. Now here's what I'd like for you to do is to set this block up right above your left knee and heel to the right foot out. All right, so hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. And then maybe bring this block out in front. You can bring it on the low or the mid level. And we're going to come down onto our forearms for lizard. So remember to keep the heart working forward. So we've warmed up now. We can start to take this a little deeper. All right, and then maybe you can bring it down another notch. Another option is if you uh, take maybe your left elbow uh, down onto the ground and then turn your uh, your hand towards your ankle. Bring your right hand to your knee and we can take this twist a little deeper. Now, uh, even if your thigh is resting on that block, I want you to uh, feel your big toe ball mound and your little toe ball mound, and then maybe you can work your way off of that block. But you want that same uh, feeling of support, which requires that you draw the femur head into socket and continue to, to press back into the ball mounds of your toes and your heel. So lower your back knee and we'll all come up. All right, now another option to play with here, I'm gonna change sides so you can see is, and again, you can bring in the block for your hand, is to bend your back knee, so this is your left knee, and reach back with your hand to draw your heel towards your glute. Now this might be plenty, you can probably already feel a quad stretch, or you can start to dip in, get the quad stretch, and the twist through the spine, and the heart opener. So stay where it feels good, and you want the weight above your kneecap, so uh, which requires a great deal of length in the psoas. So if the weight is directly on the top of your knee, you might even roll up the side of your mat just for some more cushion. But if you learn to bring the weight um, above the kneecap, so uh, not directly on top of the pointy part of the kneecap, but above it, moving towards uh, the lower part of the quad. You can dip into your hips. You might try drawing your elbow up and down. Let me direct the breath up into your shoulder, get a nice pec stretch, and you can also press your foot in to your hand. Oh, it feels good. Stay where it feels good. Big breath in. And slow breath out. Now, when you're ready to come out, bring your right knee back to meet your left. Extended child. Make nice. Now, coming into down dog, um, we're going to hop 
forward and back a few times from down dog into our squat. So from down dog, look forward, hop your feet to the outsides of your hands like a frog, and then hop back. So uh, if hopping is not uh, accessible yet, just step out to the right, step out to the left, sit down, step back, step back, opposite foot, step out to the left, step out to the right, sit down, or hop your feet to the outsides of your hands. Step back, try hopping back, and we're gonna meet in our squat pose. So here we are in our squat again. <laughs> lots of repetition, lots of hair flying. And you have the option of coming in to your crow pose. Again, we want to, to build on every time. Remember, we're not hopping into or pushing into our crow. You want to tip into crow. So imagine that you are a teapot, literally, and you are super full, and you don't want to spill, so you have to go really, really slow, hearts forward, hearts forward, hearts forward, and your toes just peel up off the floor. So there's no push. Take three to five breaths. Now, if you're in your crow, I want you to concentrate on trying to lengthen through your spine. We tend to be really, really rounded, so try and reach your heart forward and find the curves of your lumbar spine and your cervical spine. Draw the heels high up towards the glutes. And when you're ready to come out, we'll meet back in our squats. So uh, if you're hanging out in squat, you might even extend one leg out to the side while everybody's playing with crow. Extend the other. And we can all do that together. Getting into the inner thigh. It's a great counter to our uh, lizard. Now also, um, you know, sometimes crouching down like this, especially when we're moving you know, towards skandasana, can be uh, tender on the knees. So here's where you can also bring in your blocks, especially if you're working with um, you know, knee problems, pregnancy, it might look more like this, and that's okay. Bring it in the blocks. These are tools to help us. Here, step your other foot. As long as we're feeling the stretch, then it's perfect. And since we're here, let's all meet in a wide-legged forward fold. So step your feet out. Uh, in a wide-legged forward fold, you're going to draw your toes in slightly and your heels out, and we'll come down. Now, uh, if I was working with uh, a, a newbie or someone who is pregnant where balance is an issue, of course, blocks underneath the hands. They can lift and lower, and this is going to make them feel really sturdy. Um, or you can bring your hands to your ankles or peace fingers around your big toes. Sometimes it's nice to bring in the block for your head, too, just to give yourself, you know, if you're only an inch off the ground, you know, it'll give you just a little bit more feedback. And you can lift your tailbone. And then eventually you can bring your head down to the ground. All right, so meeting back in our squat, heel toe your feet in. My kitten wants in. And inhale, come on up. So three rounds. <sighs> Coming on up. Let's take half moon to the side and the other side. Inhale, lift you up. Exhale, takes you over. It doesn't matter which way you go. 
So uh, this past weekend, the advanced teacher training program did a, uh, a trauma, uh, kind of a trauma-informed course. And it was really nice to not have someone tell you left and right. Just go to the side, go to the other side. Because when, when we're, we're getting caught up in details, and it really brings us in to our left brain. And we want to, you know, um, quiet that chatter and let the, the right brain come to the, the forefront. So it really, uh, it, was, it was nice to, to not have so many details and just to keep it simple and have it be about a feeling state. Take a look at your feet. We're gonna bring them in just a little bit for stability. Inhale out and up, palm stretch overhead. And exhale, swan dive, hinge from the hips. Remember, you're making some space between your thighs for your belly. So really kind of snuggle it in there. You might uh, take your peace fingers, wrap them around your big toes. And we're stepping the left foot back. Taking your block, place it underneath your right thigh, so above your knee, and then we'll heel toe the left foot out to the side. So I'm gonna go to the side so you can see. And then take your other block and bring it in. Now you can bring it to the mid-level. Uh, maybe your hands stay on the block wherever your left foot's heel toeing out to the side. You can roll onto the pinky toe edge of the foot. And you're pressing through your back heel. So it might even uh, kind of draw your toes in. I feel the ball mounds of your big toe and your little toe. Try activating your glutes here and see what changes. Drawing that femur head into socket. So here I'm going to hang and then I'm going to draw it into the socket. So hang, draw it into the socket. hearts forward and you might stay lifted so the the most important part of lizard is that the spine is long and the thoracic spine is not rounded so hearts reaching forward and if you feel open and you can keep the heart forward without rounding the thoracic spine then you can come down a little deeper onto your elbows few breaths. You might bring the block down to the lowest level. And we're taking this step by step by step and adding more layers to uh, prepare for an arm balance where you'll actually bring your shoulder underneath that left knee. But uh, for right now, <laughs> we just paving the way. We're, we're almost there, almost there. All right, so, so you can get front view. I'm gonna come back here. And just to show you, you'd start to work your shoulder underneath the back of your arm. That's what's next. Okay, so take your right hand and, and turn your forearm so it's parallel to the top of your mat and just take hold of your ankle. Bring your left hand to your knee and we're gonna take this twist. Remember your right quad is activated. We're just using this block for a little bit of stability and then also for some feedback. All right, so let's come on up off that block and then lower your right knee. So right hand can come down either to the inside of the foot or onto a block. And we're gonna take this stretch and twist into a heart opener. So you can bend your right knee, take hold of uh, your foot with your left hand. This side's definitely different than the other. <laughs> so you wanna notice if one side's different than the other, I'm gonna bring in another block for support for 
toes. And you want to find that sweet spot again above the knee. So you can draw your heel towards your glute, get the uh, quad stretch that'll counter our hamstring stretches that we started with in the beginning of class. You can roll onto the pinky toe edge of that left foot and lift the heart, start to lean back. Direct the breath up into your left shoulder. You can draw the elbow up and down. And breathe, big breath in. So you can get it into your heart, lean back. When you're ready to come out, release. Take your hand to your knee, go nice and slow, and take your left knee back to meet the right. So circle out the hips. Ooh. And to counter that, what I'd like to do is ask you to bring your hips off to one side and sit down. Bring your hands back behind you. Take your feet wide and let the knees go in towards center line. So one at a time, just kind of windshield wiper in the knees, and this will counter uh, the iliacus stretch. So now we're getting into the outside of the hip and kind of running all the way down the IT band a little bit. Heart's lifted. Oh yeah. All right, so I want to build a little bit of heat uh, coming forward so uh, and move into a, a pretty advanced uh, arm balance uh, for those of you that would like to try it. But I'm going to layer this so everyone can, can move forward together and you have options. Uh, so I'll demo first and then we'll all join in and do it together. So you can start from tabletop and extend your right heel back. And um, we'll start with rounding to the knee to the nose, and then cross the body, knee to opposite elbow, and we're gonna take the knee to the outside. And here's where we're gonna come into our lizards. So you can start with uh, any of the lizard variations that we've worked with if you want to stay there. Now, if we're coming in to Ekapada, which just means one foot to arm balance. Uh, you can uh, bring your block in front of your uh, left uh, thigh for support. And we're going to start to work our, uh, so again, you can bring this in. I'm gonna move it just for now so you can see. You're gonna start to work your right shoulder underneath the back of your knee. And this might be plenty here, okay? So now I'll turn to the side. So here we are, if you want to move into the arm balance, you're bringing your shoulder underneath the back of your arm. Maybe you have this block here for support. And we'll start to lift that right foot up. Now you can also modify by bringing your toes back and do little push-ups. Okay, are you ready? Let's try this. So we're gonna start from table, we're gonna do this twice. Um, first from tabletop, and then from downward facing dog, and I'll demo again before we do that. So coming onto your hands and knees, send your right foot back on an inhale, heart forward, round knee to nose, exhale. Inhale for leg, cross the body. So right knee, left elbow, inhale back, Right knee, right elbow, and then plant your foot, coming into our lizard. All right, if this is your first time trying this arm balance, bring your block in underneath that right thigh. Okay, so set it up. Start to work your shoulder, right shoulder, underneath the back of your knee, and your elbow is at a 90 degree bend. Okay, 
Tuck your back toes. Start to scrunch your front toes forward. Now you can lift your right leg. That requires a open hamstrings. So if your hamstrings are tight, point your toe back behind you and we'll try some baby push-ups. Now you might even lift your back toes as you lower down. There you go. So there's a nice uh, way to kind of flirt with coming in to an arm balance. Shake your hips from side to side, bring your right knee back to meet your left. Child's pose. All right, other side. Tabletop, inhale left, heel straight back. Exhale, round knee to nose. Inhale, reach back. Heart forward, exhale, cross the body. So left knee, right elbow. Inhale, reach back. And exhale, left knee, left elbow. Take it high up towards the shoulder and then bring your foot down to the ground. No cramp. All right, so here we are in our lizard once more. Bring your block underneath your right thigh, lower down. Start to work your left shoulder underneath the back of your leg. Now you might heel toe that left foot in a little bit. You, know, you want to cinch up here, get it as high up onto the shoulder as you can, and then scrunch your toes forward, see if you can lift your foot. Hello, intercostal muscles. If that's too much, again, just send your foot back behind you, and we'll do these little push-ups. Breathe. When you're ready to come out, Draw your right knee down, blocks to the side, and hips to the heels. Let's take full child's breaths, hands beside your feet, palms face up, five breaths. and natural seat. So this will be our grand finale. Everything that we've done up to this point has been to prepare us for this apex. So after this, we'll, uh, we'll do a nice long pigeon and work our way to Shavasana. Hopefully you are warm. All right, so you can continue to use the blocks, especially underneath that back leg until you're able to press down uh, with your, your front leg with the hamstring on the back of the arm, until you're able to press down with that leg uh, to get the leverage to lift your back leg up, you'll wanna use the blocks to modify. Right. So I'll demo and then we'll do this together. So coming in to downward facing dog, uh, this is the same thing that we just did in table but we're going to come from down dog. So one round knee to nose, three-legged dog, one round right knee, right elbow, inhaling back for three-legged dog, and then drawing your right knee to your right elbow, and here's where we can come in to our uh, arm balance. Now what I'm doing, so that you can see this, the other side, with this elbow here, is I'm actually bringing it in to my hip. Now over time, you'll be able to move it off to the side and maintain this pose without um, having to use your elbow. So one more time, I'll show you from this side. Three-legged dog, right knee, right elbow. Now I'm lowering down on to this elbow and then over time, you can start to come off. My wall space does not allow that. All right, so are you ready to try this together? Let's do it, all right. So coming into downward facing dog, pulling the right toes back behind you, inhale, three-legged dog, exhale, round knee to nose, curl through the spine, inhale, back, three-legged dog, right knee, left elbow, cross the body, inhale, three-legged dog, Right knee, right elbow. You might point your toes forward as you lower down and back leg lift. So remember you're tipping, not hopping. Back to downward facing dog, pedal at your heels. All right, other side. 
Inhale, three-legged dog, point your left toes high. Round knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Left knee, right elbow, cross the body. Inhale back. Left knee, left elbow. Bend your elbows. Extend out through your left toes. You might teeter-totter here. There you go. Double breaths. Shoulder blades down the back. And downward facing dog. Big breath in. Exhale out through the mouth. And pigeon on the right. Draw your right knee behind your right wrist. Tense your fingers, lift your heart. Big inhale. And exhale, lower down. Come onto your forearms. You may bring in a block for your chest or your forehead. And we'll sprawl out here. Feel your heart beat. Feel the heat you've cultivated. And relax. All the work is over. So you can see just how quickly we went from, <laughs> you know, warming up with kind of a, a how would you modify a sun salve for uh, someone working with pregnancy or uh, you know or obesity um, to really advanced arm balances <laughs> and heat builders they are not uh, exclusive of each other in any way and it's all about approach and especially with the lizards and the hamstring stretches and the quad stretches this is going to be great for uh, athletes that you know are, are runners so it gets into the quadriceps the hamstrings the iliacus even uh, the the pecs we did some shoulder openers in our warrior one I really just want to make sure that we cover all the bases with our asana so that we're opening up the hips, bring, uh, bring yourself up onto your right hip, speaking up, and swing your left leg around. We're gonna come into butterfly pose. So soles of the feet together, hold on to your toes, inhale, lift the heart, and exhale, fold forward. Inhaling up, cross at your ankles, and we'll come back into our down dog for pigeon on the left. Drawing your left knee behind your left wrist. Take a moment uh, and enjoy that back bend. You might tent your fingers, lift your heart. You might look over your shoulder to make sure that your uh, toes are pointing straight back. Maybe a little internal rotation of that right leg. Uh, sprawl out when you're ready. over onto your left hip. Bring the soles of the feet together so right leg swings forward for butterfly pose one more time. Inhale, lengthen through the spine, and exhale folding in. Inhale up, 
Now, with how much work we've done with the knees moving off uh, at an angle, this is where I want you guys to come down onto your backs. And uh, let's say we'll let the uh, widen your feet like we did before. Let the left knee fall in. I'm going to come onto my elbows just so you can see. And take your right ankle and place it on top of the knee. Right. Both feet are flexed. All right. And you can come all the way onto your back. Arms out in T formation. Try turning your gaze over the left shoulder. Maybe you can take your arms overhead and hold on to opposite elbows. Bring your head to center. Bring your feet to the floor so that right foot comes out. And draw your knees up and, and we'll windshield wiper a few times, drawing the right knee down towards center line. So the right knee is below the navel. And then take your left ankle and bring it on top of that right knee for some added weight. You might turn your gaze over your right shoulder. Windshield wiper from side to side when you're ready to come out. And I'd like to offer uh, Upa Vista Karani, legs up the wall, for our final pose. So if you've never done legs up the wall before, then you just come close to the wall, bring your shoulder to the wall, and then uh, spin on your bottom and draw the heels up. And this is great for um, uh, blood flow reversal in the legs. relaxation and this can absolutely replace uh, shavasana so we'll stay here for about three to five minutes or if you'd like to uh, place a bolster underneath your knees and lie flat on your back from shavasana whatever feels right for you so if you're in legs at the wall your your heels rest on the wall You can even place a, a little blanket underneath your uh, sacrum and that will provide some traction for the lower back. And we'll settle into stillness, being really quiet. And allow any sounds coming from the external environment just to bring you into a deeper state of relaxation. Allow your eyeballs to sink into their sockets. Relax the throat, femur heads, pelvic floor, and feel the blood rushing out of your legs and pooling in your pelvis.
I might roll out the wrists. Point and flex the feet. The legs up the wall is great to do if you ever have trouble sleeping or if you just need to reset your nervous system. So walk your feet down the wall and over to one side. If you're in Shavasana, just make your way onto your right side. Pausing for a few breaths. I'm coming to a seated position. Watching your breath, feeling its temperature as it moves in and out of the body. And fixing your gaze internally at third eye center. Close practice with a round of OM. So feel free to join in, taking in a deep breath. 